You've got a pretty comprehensive note out here, basically, and you favor the large cap financials. Why? I think what you're seeing with the large cap banks is that they have a competitive advantage over the smaller banks when it comes to the consumer banking area. The consumer banking area, as we all know, is driven by technology. They have the best technology, and I think that's going to continue to be the case. They also, though, have a diversified revenue stream. That diversified revenue stream should also benefit from a continued strength in the U.S. economy this year. How much of your call is also that it's gotten so bad for them it's got to get better, such as things like hedge fund participation in financial things like the extent to which their price earnings ratio really dips below the norm for the S&P. You know, that's an interesting question, and I think you're right. When you look at the valuations of the banks, we're not at levels that would be considered excessive. You also are right in, you know, the last, uh, in 2018, the sell-off in the bank stocks was particularly hard in December. We've recovered nicely from that point. Year-to-date, the banks are still ahead of the general markets from that recovery. And I think that's what people are seeing, is that the valuations are very attractive. You look at names like J.P. Morgan or Bank America, Citigroup, these large banks are attractively priced, and we expect this year to be another record year of profits for the banking industry, which would make it the fifth consecutive year of record profits. But, Gerard, we're still not seeing uh, the inflows into, say, financial ETFs. Does growth need to like, completely fall out of bed for financials to do well, or is there going to be something fundamental that we can hold on to here? That, that's a real, I, I agree with you, we're watching those trends on the ETFs and the financial ETFs, similar to many of the equity ETFs are seeing an outflow, but particularly the financials, which is somewhat puzzling, because when you take a look at the outlook, assuming that the U.S. economy continues to grow this year, which most people are anticipating, the Fed's on pause, and I think we're setting up for a period that's very similar to the late 1990s. You might remember back then, in 94, 95, the Fed tightened, there was no recession that came after of that tightening period. It was really the heyday of bank stock investing in 97 and 98. Now, granted, we had big mergers and acquisitions in that time period. We think big M&A is coming back as well. So I, we think this is a period that could be more similar to the late 90s, which would give us a couple of years of doing very well with bank stocks. So what kind of stocks are going to do well? Is it going to be those that are led, say, uh, by their retail banking system, or is it loan growth, or is it investment banking when it comes to, say, M&A and advisory fees? What do you see? Yep, it's going to be the diversified revenue, and I think you put your thumb on a number of those areas where the banks are going to see good revenue growth. I'd also point out that if the Fed has truly finished raising rates, one of the challenges the banks have had recently is the so-called deposit beta. That's the percentage of the interest rate of the Fed funds rate increase that they pass on to their customers. And now that the Fed has finished doing that, these deposit betas should start to stabilize. And should that be the case, you're going to see the banks uh, have an advantage now on spreads because they're not going to have to pass on rate increases to their customers. And should the Fed start cutting rates, that would then steepen the yield curve, which would be positive for the banks as well. So, so I think it's going to come from the commercial lending area as well as consumer. Gerard, quickly, uh, one last question. That's making money off of somebody else's M&A. What about their own M&A? Is there an advantage for the regional banks because there's more upside to M&A here in the United States? I think there is some, David, and I would say that the economies of scale from technology and national brand marketing are driving the big regional deals. And if we could get mergers of equals where there's not dilution to tangible book value share, both stocks will go higher. And I do see more of that coming.